Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. So, today we are going to be taking a look at the Aorus H5 gaming headset. I uh, picked this up for around 60 bucks on sale. Usually you can find it in around that range, up as high as like $70 depending on the website or the deals they have going on. So without wasting any more time, let's just get into a closer look at this headset, check out the build quality, the materials they used, and then start talking about some of the other features and the relative performance of this headset. All right, so the first thing I want to touch on with the H5s here are the uh, the plastics and overall build quality uh, present here. So the plastics are admittedly a little bit on the creaky side, but it's not anything that makes it feel flimsy. Uh, it does feel extremely light, however, and they have definitely offered for a sort of gamer-centric aesthetic here, going with very visible Aorus branding all throughout the headset including the top of the headband, as well as these uh, brushed aluminum bits on the side here that have the Aorus name uh, um, uh, etched into them. You've also got little bits of orange trim throughout the headset. I'm personally not the biggest fan of that ever, since this is an RGB-enabled device. I kind of feel like it takes away from some of the different lighting settings that you can use for this, but uh, we'll, we'll talk more about that a little bit later on. The ear pads for this thing are huge. I mean, I mean, look at that, that is thick. I think probably the only issue that I have with the ear cups and really the the uh, the speaker housing in general is the fact that it's it's round. If you try and draw a shape around the human ear, you'll notice that it has more of an ovular shape to it uh, rather than a circular one. So as a result, if you've got kind of big ears, this may not fit too well over your head and you may wind up experiencing fatigue uh, after a relatively short period of time as a result of that. Probably the only other comfort related issue you may experience is uh, the headband up top here. So it uses these two what feel like ABS plastic uh, bands, possibly with a thin metal core going through the center of them. And while it does leave the headset very, very obviously uh, flexible enough to fit over most anyone's head, they don't, the bands themselves don't adjust out. It's just the padded, uh, it's just the padded band in the center that has any sort of range of adjustment and once you reach the top of these plastic bands That's it. You know, this is not a one-size-fits-all solution like most headsets uh, Go into this uh, expecting that there's a possibility it may not fit your head adequately now as far as the drivers this thing is using Gigabyte advertises these as 50 millimeter beryllium drivers I want to very briefly touch on something with the marketing speak surrounding drivers in headsets. When you're talking about beryllium here, what they mean is it basically the dome housing that encapsulates the driver is made out of beryllium. But do not assume that just because a speaker has a beryllium housing or a neodymium magnet in it, that it's automatically going to be better. You could have the most amazing housing in the world for your drivers, but have a garbage magnet and a terribly designed cone that uses really bad materials, and the whole thing's still gonna sound like crap. So just understand that marketing speak when you go into a speaker purchase. Just because it has those materials in it does not inherently mean it's good. Now as far as anything else goes with the headset, uh, the only thing you have built in line is this little controller here that has a volume rocker on one side and an on and off switch for the detachable microphone on the other. I actually kind of like the design decision that they made here because it has this kind of layered dragon scale thing going on in the corners and depending on how the light hits this, it takes on a slightly different uh, look and colorization to this. But once again, we have these little bits of orange trim on here and I kind of feel like this in general was a missed opportunity for them to maybe incorporate some RGB lighting in here and like with the rest of the headset eliminate the orange accent pieces and replace them with uh, independent color zones that you would be able to control through either the uh, the gigabyte uh, fu uh, RGB fusion software for a motherboard or through the Aorus engine software depending on which you would be using for your specific scenario. Now this can be powered reasonably well by uh, something like a cell phone and I did actually use my Galaxy S7 Edge uh, to do some of my mobile testing with this headset. But I gotta tell you the cable as nice as it might be in spite of not having any uh, cable braiding on it and again that will be sort of uh, depending on the camp you subscribe 
subscribe to. Some people prefer braided cables, others don't. I personally don't care, as long as it's a well-made cable. But there's a lot of it, and if you're trying to walk around, say you're walking around downtown or just taking a, a quick walk up to the corner store or something, and you're using this headset, you're going to have a massive wad of cables hanging out of your pocket. Not to mention the back side of this cable has three different connectors on it uh, for the headset itself, for the microphone, and then a third connector that has USB 2 at the end to allow you to power and control the RGB lighting that's on the side of the headset. So as far as using this on something like a cell phone or a tablet, I would probably restrict that just to in-home use. Now, as far as the microphone that they include, uh, it is a flexible, detachable microphone. It has a three pole connector that uh, plugs into the left ear cup. It is relatively easy to adjust, but the plastic on the outside of it, um, or I guess the, the rubberized coating, I should say, is, it, it's a bit stiff. So the, the microphone tends to want to fight with you a little bit to get it in place, but it's only slightly more effort. It's not really a big deal. It still adjusts really well. Now the one thing that I did notice here is that even though this is a unidirectional microphone, it unfortunately does not have a pop filter. And I'll go ahead and play a sound clip of my voice speaking through this microphone. Um, let me know what you guys think. I personally feel like a pop filter would help this a lot. I don't know, maybe my, sen my hearing might just be a little more or less sensitive than yours. This is a microphone test for the Aorus H5 gaming headset. As far as all around comfort is concerned with this, I'm able to use this for gaming sessions as long as four and a half to five hours, and I really don't experience much of any ear fatigue. And I guess that pretty much takes us into uh, talking about relative performance. So let's go ahead and bring it back out to third person mode and wrap this suck duck up. So before we get into actually talking about how this headset sounded, I wanna talk about my experience using the software here. Via the Gigabyte website, you can go to the product page for the Aorus H5 headset, click on support, and that will bring you to the download for Gigabyte's Aorus Engine software. The software not only enables independent control of all of your Aorus uh, RGB Fusion enabled devices uh, through Aorus Engine, but it also provides a GPU overclocking tool for you to use, as well as uh, fan profile control for your uh, RGB Fusion or Aorus uh, graphics card. As far as the overclocking and fan tuning stuff goes, I could actually use that on my EVGA GTX 980 for the win as well. The problem, however, is the RS Engine software, at least for my use case, was extremely buggy and it was constantly crashing on me to the point that I couldn't even realistically use it reliably, uh, except for maybe one or two random days out of every two weeks or something. So basically I just wound up controlling these through the RGB Fusion software that I use through the Gigabyte App Center. I am happy to report that RGB Fusion is largely stable uh, using it through the App Center software, but it's kind of unfortunate that that's the experience I've had with it because for someone that doesn't have a, an RGB Fusion enabled motherboard, you wouldn't have access to that more stable RGB lighting control for this headset. Not to mention, the there's only like three lighting modes you get for this headset. One of them is a rainbow cycling mode, uh, the other one is a pulsing mode, and then you just have static lighting. The problem with the other modes though is they, they seemed really jumpy to me, to the point that it was, it was kind of jarring even for, even for uh, the Manic Misses, whose desk is directly next to mine, to look at. So I basically just wound up leaving it on static color settings. Again, I just kind of wish there were a few more lighting zones that you could work with on this. I mean, granted, RGB lighting on a headset, is it really necessary? But if you're gonna go RGB, just go all out and give us a bunch of lighting zones and at least four or five different sort of color cycling options for us to go with. Granted, this could all be patched into the software at later points in time, I'm sure. Or if it couldn't, then maybe that sort of gives Gigabyte the opportunity to make an Aorus H7? All right, so let's talk about relative performance now. All of this information is purely subjective, especially in my use case scenario where I don't really have a scientific way to effectively test uh, the sound quality coming from these. It's kind of, it's kind of like you have to take my word for it, right? Not to mention the only headset that I really had to compare these two on any front is my fiance's HyperX Cloud 2 headset, which is admittedly about 40% more expensive than this. 
But the shocker was when I pitted both these headsets against each other in the four standardized songs that I'll have linked down in the video description, this headset was shockingly close, in my opinion, to the HyperX Cloud 2s. Now, I of course did not use the 7.1 surround sound feature for the Cloud 2 headset. I tried to keep everything as neutral as possible, and when using it on mobile devices, I tried to control the sound quality, the sound volume settings as much as I could. However, because the Cloud 2s don't have inbuilt volume control when you're using it just through a mobile device, uh, I had to adjust volumes a little bit there. So I tried to get it as close to my comfortable listening levels with both as possible. And I gotta say, while the Cloud 2s as a comparison point did kind of win over the RSH5, it didn't win by what I felt was as big a margin as it should have. And if I'm being perfectly honest, the bass response on the RSH5s sounded a heck of a lot better. Not to mention that with the H5s, because the sound floor felt like it was just a bit more closed in, I had a stronger sense of directional sounds, especially when I was playing Elder Scrolls Online, which has sort of been my MMO du jour for the moment. And in talking with people on Discord, no one had any issues hearing me at all. I came through loud and clear. Uh, maybe not as clear as something like the HyperX Cloud 2's headset would have, but again, we're talking about a comparison point that is as much as 30 to $40 more expensive than this headset. And this came within spitting distance of it. So I guess to sum up the RSH5 headset, it would go a little something like this. At a $60 price point, there is nothing to feel bad about with this purchase. You've got good build quality, okay materials, maybe they could stand to be a little bit better, but it's not going to crumble apart in your hands like some other headsets that I've actually had come my way in the past. The inbuilt microphone sounds great for what you're getting, even without the presence of a pop filter. Sound quality is excellent regardless of whether you're listening to music, watching shows, or playing games and its ability to accurately portray the direction a sound is coming at you from despite only having stereo sound enabled is really strong. So if you were considering the Aorus H5 gaming headset at all, I wouldn't feel bad about just going ahead and going with the purchase. This is a rock solid headset. Anyway, I think that about buttons this one up. Uh, go ahead and toss me a thumbs up on the video if you liked it. Uh, leave some feedback down below. Let me know if you're a user of the Aorus H5 headset presently and what your experiences has been with it, good or bad. Also, don't forget to follow me on my social media feeds. I'm more active on Instagram than I am on Twitter, but all of my Instagram posts cascade over to Twitter anyway, so you won't be missing anything either way. But follow both all the same, because sometimes I don't share, because I'm greedy. Also, subscribe for more content coming at you, hopefully sooner rather than later, and I'll catch you guys next time. So take it easy.